Hey everybody, today on Bella Renovare, we are gonna be making over this cabinet. If you feel like you're having deja vu, you kind of are. It is very similar to the one that we worked on last week. It does have different design on the doors and it's a little bit bigger, but we are gonna be doing something colorful this week instead of doing neutral. So if you wanna see me do some colorful blending and transform this piece, stay tuned. Hi everybody, if you're new here, my name is Kristana. I am a furniture artist and I'm the owner here of Bella Renovare by Kristana. I do a lot of colorful furniture, so today is no different. We are going to be doing a blended, we're gonna do some blues and greens and blended for a custom piece. So if you guys are not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos that I put out each week. Every Friday, I put a video out. Also, everything I use will be in the description below. Okay, so there's a little see more tab down underneath the description. If you click on that, there will pull up the full description of what we're doing, where you can find me, um, my other social medias. Also, where you can find all the products, you just click on those links and it'll take you right where you need to go to purchase them. So again, without further ado, we are gonna get colorful here and we are going to transform this. So let's get started. For this piece, I removed the hardware first. So I removed the knobs, they actually were screwed in. So they were the kind of knobs that had a actual like screw on the end of them. And then I also removed the handles. I did try to remove the doors and the hinges like I did the piece last week, but I was not able to. So I think maybe they glued it. Either way, I'm gonna paint over the hinges. I normally don't, but for this piece I am. But we will remove the hardware so that way I don't get any paint on them. I always clean my pieces with Dixie Bell's White Lightning. If you do not have White Lightning, a lot of times in the EU, in the UK, they don't have White Lightning, so a lot of people use sugar soap. But what I do is I put warm water and I put the White Lightning in there and I mix it around with my microfiber cloth. I always wear gloves. And then I go ahead and I clean the entire piece down with this White Lightning mixture. I also pull out the drawers and open everything. I always clean inside the piece, underneath the piece, because you really never know. I'd like to get it as clean as possible. I like to think about it as if it was in my house, I'd want it to be as clean as possible. So I always clean the insides, underneath, where the drawers are, pull the drawers out, the inside of the drawers, everything. You can see how dirty the water is right here, and this isn't even actually one of the worst pieces I've done. This water is actually clean, if you can believe it. So this is how gross it is. Now the next step is to get another bucket of water, but just clean water. You want a clean rag, and you want to go over your piece with clean water and a clean rag to get all the residual TSP or whatever cleaner you're using, because that will cause adhesion issues if you do not get that off. So I'm going over this piece again, but just with water and a clean rag. The next step is to use Dixie Belle's Big Mama's Butter. I'm using Orange Grove. I like to use this to refresh the wood and just give it a really nice smell. So I'm using my bell brush to go over everything inside. I'm only doing the inside and I'll do the drawers because it is oil based. I don't want to put it on the outside otherwise it will resist my paint. So I'm just doing the insides where I'm not going to paint and I'm taking a rag and I'm wiping off the excess right away. You want to do this otherwise it'll stay on there and it'll be tacky. So make sure you remove the excess off so that it can soak really well into that wood. I'm going to put a base coat down of Dixie Belle's The Golf. So if you're not using Dixie Belle, this color is Tiffany blue. So whatever you're using, I like to do a lighter base coat before I do my blending. One, I like to have a base coat so that way when I do my blending, it doesn't wear down to the wooden finish. Also, I like to have a lighter base coat of the colors that I'm using because it just gives me a really good idea of where I need to put stuff. I prefer a lighter base coat just because it's easier for me to see the colors. If I did a darker base coat, I won't be able to see the lighter colors. So it's just personal preference at this point. I am doing the entire piece in the golf 
and then I'm going to wait for it to completely dry before I actually go on to my blending. Okay, everybody, so usually in my videos, or most of my videos, I do a voiceover, but I don't do voiceovers when I'm blending because it's much easier for me to work through the process with you while I'm actually doing it. It's a lot harder for me to look at the process and do a voiceover when I'm blending. So if you ever wonder why is she doing a voiceover with a lot of things, if I don't do a voiceover, it usually means that it it's better for me to explain it to you while I'm doing it. So anyways, this video almost didn't happen. I hate to go on tangents, but this week has been really rough. Um, my dog, my best friend of 15 and a half years, I had to, we had to make the decision to um, put him down this week. So it's been super, super rough. And so just be patient with me if this video isn't, you know, hopefully it's as good as all the other videos, but it's just been kind of a tough week. Um, and I didn't want to take the week off because, you know, it makes me happy to bring happiness and color to people. And I think that Zeppelin would have really liked this piece. Even though he's a dog, he is always with me. He was actually in a couple of my videos, um, probably like two or three videos ago, he was in the beginning with me. So he um, he's not, a, not in pain anymore. And that's the only thing that's comforting me right now <laughs> as far as that goes. But, okay, so I am blending this piece. And my client wants blues and greens, okay? And she likes the ocean. So I'm gonna get a little bit closer and show you because from further away, you can't see all the colors that are in here. But you can see there's blues, there's greens. I do use quite a few colors in here. I try to keep my blend simple, but this one I really needed to use quite a few colors. So I've got one, two, three, four, five colors that I'm using. This base coat is the golf, like I showed you guys. If you can see this, there's some blue in here. Let me try to get a little bit closer. So I'm gonna try to get a little bit closer so you guys can see. Let me try to get a little, little bit closer. So you can see that there's some blue here and there's some turquoise. So there's blue and turquoise and green. And so that's what my goal was for her is to make a unique piece, but something that it'll be a statement piece but something that she can put in her house after her husband retires. She's also a teacher, so I wanna make it special for her because everything that's going on this year, you know, she's there teaching the kids. So I am gonna show you how I did this over on this side. And again, when you see the pictures and things like that at the end of the video, I think you'll be able to see the colors a little bit better. Sometimes on camera, you can't see it quite as much, but I'm looking at it and I see all this green and all this blue and blue up here. And sometimes on the camera, it doesn't always show it. So hopefully you guys can see how pretty it really is. I feel like pictures and video never do pieces justice. So we're gonna start with this, but let me tell you the colors that we're gonna use. So the base is the golf, and so that's the color. If I wanna do any highlighting, I'll use it, but when I did this part, I didn't. So I'm gonna keep this just in case, but I've got a brush for each color. You could, it, in theory, you could use like a cheap chip brush for each color because what I'm gonna do is actually just place the colors, and then I'm gonna take a clean, dry, clean, dry neutral brush at the end to really pull it all together. So you don't necessarily need a really nice brush to add the colors to blend the way that I'm gonna show you how to blend. So um, take that for what it's worth. I don't want you to feel like you have to have a nice brush for each color. You are gonna want to have a nice brush for the very end for feathering everything. So I'm using Dixie Belle's Cobalt Blue. So this is a very bright blue. So if you're not, if you don't use Dixie Belle, you're gonna want a bright blue. I have Mermaid Tail which is like a, you know, a deep aqua. The golf for my base coat, this is a Tiffany blue. Like if I could say what, what color it is, it's definitely Tiffany blue. I'm gonna be using Peacock as well. And then I have my green, green, green. I have tree frog green. So this is tree frog green, which is like the brightest green of the green that they have. So if you are using different a different paint line, then you're gonna to wanna to get stuff that's similar. So, you know, as long as it's close, it should give you this look. 
and if you're using a chalk style paint. So the mineral style paints that are out there don't quite blend as well as this, but um, clay based paints and the chalk based paints, those ones blend or most of them blend pretty well. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how I did this over on this door and then I might work through a couple other areas. And you, you guys know if you've watched me, I like to pull colors up here and down here and stuff like that. So we may work through this together, but first we're going to focus on this door. If you're blending and you have to walk away, I always just use a sandwich bag or, well, this is a gallon bag, but I always put my paintbrushes in here and close it and that way I don't have to keep washing them out. So that's a really good tip for you to keep your brushes if you have to walk away. So you're gonna want a paintbrush for each color, whether that be a nice brush or a chip brush, and you'll see why you don't need a super nice brush in a second, but at the very end, you really do need a nice quality, clean, dry, neutral brush. This is what's really gonna pull everything together. I don't feel as though cheap chip brushes do a good job of blending, so you're gonna want at least a nice brush for the blending at the end. I also have a mister bottle, and this is just water. There's nothing else in it, just water. So I'm gonna mist the surface just ever so slightly because this paint is dry. I'm going to take my cobalt blue, be my first color, and like a lot of them, I'm just gonna kinda outline. And honestly, you can put as little or a lot as you want because all of these colors are in the same color family, they're gonna blend beautifully together. So you could really, you, you don't have to use all these colors. You could omit one of the colors if you wanted to. You could add a different shade of blue. As long as you're staying in the same color family, the way that I'm about to show you how to blend will work. So even if you wanted to do pinks or reds or purples or oranges, as you know, even other greens, as long as you stay with that color family like I am right now, this way of blending that I'm about to show you will work just fine. So I'm kind of just adding it all around here and I'm gonna set that aside and now you get to choose what your next color is. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do some tree frog green and it doesn't have to be the same exact way on both sides. I kind of want these, I don't want these to be perfectly the same. So I'm just kind of putting some tree frog green in there, okay? And you can go back and add more of these colors afterwards and I'll show you. But we're doing tree frog green and then we're going to kind of box this, we'll start boxing this off. So I've got my peacock, so I'm gonna kind of pull that peacock right there. And I'm gonna almost kind of like brush across the other colors to start kind of pulling them together. So I'm gonna brush across that cobalt and that tree frog green. And I'm gonna just kind of do it over here too. I'm putting it on my, my brush, but I'm wiping it back. So you're not putting a ton. You don't wanna erase that, but you just wanna add that color in there. Now I'm going to take my mermaid tail. This is one of the colors you probably could get rid of if you don't want this shade in there. So I'm taking my mermaid tail and I'm kind of just Filling this part right here. Now, I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna work my way down, okay? So I am going to, okay, let's make sure you can see it. I'm going to mist this across and I'm going to just do some circles. All I'm trying to do is blend these colors all together. I'm not worried about where they're gonna go. I'm not worried about, you know, is the blue gonna push into the green? Is the green gonna push into the tree frog green and the cobalt and what, yada, yada, yada. I don't care about that. I am just trying to get these colors together. And again, because they're light colors, they are going to blend beautifully. So I'm gonna go vertical, horizontal. Because this is kind of carved, I wanna go up in here and kind of pull that, go on these edges, go along those edges to pull that color. Sorry for the noise of the drawer, the door. And then I'm gonna go ahead and miss this. And I'm just gonna go horizontal. I'm gonna kind of work on my sides first. So I'm gonna go over here and go on my sides. And remember one of my videos I said I don't generally paint my hardware unless it, the piece calls for it. This piece called for it, so that is why the hardware is painted on here. Okay, so we're just kind of blending this together. We're going up and down. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna push these colors out into the side. You can even push them into the middle if you want. 
The whole point of this blend, let's go horizontal, vertical, you see it's starting to blend, is to have colors in different places. So we've got some greens up here, you can see the blue, there's blue, there's green. This is what we want, okay? We're not going for like a shading or highlighting effect. We're going for more of a col different colors, a kind of very similar to the Aurora Borealis piece that I did, except that that piece had darker blues and it had purples and things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just mist this. You don't want too much water. You can see that there's no water dripping. You don't want your water dripping. You want it just wet enough that it will help you pull these colors together so you can do some circles and you can see you're like, oh, I have a little bit of streaking. Not a problem. Go horizontal, go diagonal, and you have now mixed those colors. Now you have your blue right here. And because this blue is right here, you can kind of pull that up and then go like that. Keep a very light hand when you're blending because you don't want to mash on it. Okay, so we're gonna get a little bit closer. I'm gonna get closer down here and I wanna show you how I'm doing this one. So same exact thing, I'll just work from this, this part up. But we're gonna start at the bottom mist it, take this, kind of go down into this, and you can see that it's made its own kind of, you know, aqua color. I'm gonna go down into the edge, go over here, okay? We're gonna go down into these little cracks and crevices, down in these cracks and crevices right here, because we wanna cover that, go up, okay? I'm gonna go down. And the reason why I did a base coat first, see how pretty that is? Oh, I wish you guys could really, really see this one. This is super pretty. You guys see how there's like blue and then it turned into aqua or green and aqua and blue. It almost, this almost reminds me of like, it reminds me of the ocean or like a mermaid, you know, like a cove, like a seawater cove or something. I don't even know. So I'm just gonna keep pulling this brush and go in here. If you need some more water, you can mist it and that will help you pull these colors down and kind of cover this. Again, don't worry about anything going on around here. We're gonna go over that the same exact way. So now we want to blend this last part, right? Let's mist it. Let's just start off the bat by doing some circles. Let's just go in, do some circles, 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 okay? Now go horizontal, put a little bit more water, go vertical, go diagonal, and it has blended those colors in together, okay? And again, you wanna make sure you're getting all these little nooks and crannies, so that way it doesn't look weird, you don't have this white or the golf coming in. So let's back up. Okay, so I've backed up. This is actually dry, so it's gonna be a little bit different color. This, once it dries, it's gonna lighten up just a little bit, but they look the same, but not exact, okay? And that's what I'm going for. So you can continue to kind of miss this and go over this. Now, because there's the golf underneath, if you want to, you could take a rag, I'm not gonna do it with my finger. You could take a rag and you could kind of pull this back and that way you can see some of that lighter color. Let's get closer. Okay, remember, so there's the golf underneath. So if you wanted to pull it back a little bit and get some of that lighter color underneath, you can pull it back and you can see that it starts lighting up right there. I do a base coat because I'm not ready to actually do that, but I'm gonna go over it again. But I do a base coat so that way I can, when I distress, I can see that lighter color under there. Plus it helps to have a base coat that's lighter. That way I'm not fighting the color. So that's what this looks like. Let's say that I wanted to add a little bit of blue right here, right? Say I wanted this in the crack. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my cobalt blue and I'm just gonna kind of slide it in there. Okay, we're gonna push it up in there. We're gonna take the same brush that we had. I'm gonna wipe it off. I'm not gonna put any water on it. I'm gonna use this wet paint to pull it into there. So I'm just gonna kind of go vertical, pull it up, go like this, kind of do some circles, 
go around, pull it down. We're gonna pull that blue down and kind of just pull until you don't have any lines. So there you go. So you've got some blue, you've added a little bit of blue in there. Um, if you wanted to add different colors, you could add different colors, but that is how you would do it. I wanted to go ahead and show you something else as well. So if you wanted this corner to be blue, take your paintbrush with the cobalt blue, you don't have to add any more paint, and just kind of flick it, okay? And just kind of lightly flick it over this, and you will get this area to be more blue, and you can kind of push it out and blend it yourself. So you don't have to use a neutral brush with that, you can just kind of push some of that cobalt blue in there to get that color. So really easy. Okay, so the very last part I'm gonna go over with you is the drawer. So what I'm gonna do actually on the drawer is do something a little bit different. I'm gonna take the golf and I'm gonna kinda do like a little bit of a skin coat on here. Then I'm gonna take my cobalt and I'm gonna recess it into those cracks. Cause I would really like for that to stay behind. I'm gonna put some in there. I'm gonna put some around the edges, put a little bit around these edges here. Okay, I'm gonna take my tree frog green and I'm gonna recess that into there as well. That way we've got some of those colors that stick around in those little ornate areas. I'm gonna go ahead and just put it on the piece. Put some right here. This, there's really no rhyme or reason for this. Just put it wherever you want. I'm gonna take a little bit more of that cobalt and kind of push it right here. Now I'm going to take my peacock and I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm kind of kind of just dry brush almost over these colors, okay? I'm going to take some of this mermaid tail and I'm gonna just put it in the center, kind of like what I was doing with the other stuff, put it in the center. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to take my mister bottle and I'm gonna mist this. I have my clean dry neutral brush that I've been using, so obviously it's not clean and dry right now, but it's the same one I've been using. You can wipe this off a little bit if you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and mist this piece. I'm gonna take my brush going this way and I'm just going to go ahead and push this and I'm gonna push it onto the frame of the piece as well so that I make this blend as cohesive as I possibly can. So I'm gonna kind of push it up to there and you can see how the blue is kind of staying in that area. I'm gonna go ahead and go like this. You're gonna go on the very bottom, kind of push it down into that, the face of that. Take this and go here. Now I'm going to go over here to this part where you can see it. And I'm going to go like that. Cause this is the aqua color that really everything's mixed together. And I'm gonna mist it and I'm gonna take my brush and go horizontal and you can see the streaks of color. So I'm gonna take this and go in circles. That way I get the inside there. Okay. And then I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just going to flick it out this way. I'm gonna go vertical and I'm just going to kind of lightly let's go some do some diagonal and if you can see this if you can see it there are there's blue inside of there there's some lighter it's a little bit of aqua up here so this is kind of what I want different colors so we're gonna move over to this part. I'm gonna miss this. As you can see, I got a little bit of green up here. So we're just gonna kinda of go like this and push it up to the part like we did in the other part. Push it up to the top, go to the side, missed it. Go to the bottom. Now, if you feel like your paint is drying too much, you can go ahead and just kind of put a dab of the paint, maybe if you want some blue right here, not a big deal. Just kind of dab it, push it across, I'm gonna mist it. You can go like this if you feel like that will help you get into those areas. So I'm kind of going like this, go in circles. You wanna get all that 
I'm gonna go here. Now we've got this part right here, we gotta blend. So let's go horizontal, we'll go vertical. Okay, let's go diagonal. And so now we've got a cool little blue with some green, stuff like that. After my piece is completely dried, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat. I'm using one of my synthetic brushes to put apply it. I apply it just like I would my paint in thin coats, just as if I am painting on some paint. So that's what I do when I'm applying my clear coat is I put it on with a paintbrush and I put it on just like I'm doing paint. Make sure that I get all the excess off. So if there's like a little glob somewhere, I make sure I rub that in with my paintbrush because you don't want those to sit. You don't want little globs to sit. Otherwise it could, you know, it'll mess up your finish and it won't look nice. Now I'm gonna wet distress. So I take a microfiber cloth and I spray water on it. And then I take my fingers and I use moderate pressure and I push down on it. And what that is gonna do is it's gonna expose that golf that's underneath all the blending. And if you do it hard enough, you can expose some of the wood. I prefer to do wet distressing when I'm inside because it cuts down on the dust. Also, it allows me to get this cooler look right here. Sometimes you can't get this when you use sandpaper. So I like this look of allowing the other color to pull through. So this is how you wet distress. We do need to redo the top of this piece. So I'm stripping it down with my three by four electric ray. I start with an 80 grit and I'll go to a 120 grit. I always go with the grain. It minimizes any kind of swirl marks and I feel like it just gives a much better stripped finish when you work this way. I'm going to stain the top of this with the Voodoo Gel Stain, which is a water-based stain. I have Tobacco Road and then Up in Smoke, and I'm actually going to mix them together. So I'm gonna do a one-for-one -one of them. So I'm gonna do an equal part of both, and then I'm gonna mix them, and then I'm going to apply it over my raw wood. I like to use an applicator pad to put my stain on. So I actually start a little bit further back from the edge and I pull it in to meet the other side and then I kind of push it across. So that way I know that it is nice and even. I do that across the entire piece. And so I'm pushing it up and then I'll go down and I go in nice even strokes. Again, I go with the wood grain. And then at the very end, what I'll do is I'll just kind of do one final pass through. I'll start at one side and go all the way down to the other side. And I'll do that down the entire top of the piece. And that way I kind of have more of an even finish. I will be using Dixie Belle's Gator Hide to seal the top of it. This is a polycrylic type sealer, but it is water resistant. And so 
you can use it for high traffic areas. You can also use it for the outside. But I'm going to stir this really well. I prefer to stir this and I like to pull from the bottom and get everything from the bottom so that way everything is mixed really nice. Once I'm done stirring this, I like to pour it in a paper plate because I use the blue gator hide sponge and when I put it on the paper plate, it allows me to get the sponge perfect so that way I get gator hide on the entire part. So what you can see here, I've got my gator hide on my sponge and then I wipe it off on the edge of the paper plate and then I start at one side and I work my way down to the other side. I do this and I go with the grain just like when I'm stripping, just like when I'm staining. I go in long strokes. You don't want to stop in the middle. So what I want to show you here is how the sponge actually suctions to the surface. So what I do is I work my way a little bit back just like when I'm staining. I don't start at the very edge. I set the sponge down so it's flush and then I just kind of pull it back. So when you do that, you allow the sponge to suction to the piece. I go all the way down and then I go back and overlap that very front part and then I go in the same direction. So the key here is to make sure you're going in the same direction and this way you can get it down on your surface really nice and even. So allow that sponge to kind of just sit down and then pull it back and it will cover the entire area of that sponge and then you let it dry. I wanted to add a little bit of character to the front of this piece without taking away from the blending that we did. So what I'm doing here is I've got Dixie Belle's new Moroccan stencil. It'll be out in a couple weeks and I'm taking their gloss clear coat. So if you want to use a gloss over top of the satin that I used, I'm putting the stencil down and I'm just putting just a little tiny bit of that gloss clear coat on there because I don't want it to run underneath the stencil and I'm just rubbing it across uh, over top of the stencil and then I'm going to pull the stencil up and I'm, it's going to dry and it'll look glossy. So I'm doing the same thing on this side and once it dries so it'll have a little bit of a white residue that's okay it, it's going to dry clear and so you want to put that on there and then you lift it up and it has a really cool little invisible type stencil on there. I'm going to take Dixie Belle's brand new gemstone mousse that again comes out in a couple weeks and I'm going to just put it over top of my hardware. So this is self sealing. You don't need to seal over top of this. These brushes that I'm using are makeup brushes in case you were wondering. They're like little unicorn makeup brushes. I know they're super cute. So I'm just using that. The gold is a lot thicker than the other colors. There's four colors that will come out. So generally you want to make sure you shake these really well, but this is so thick that you don't want to shake it. It only takes a little bit and I'm just going right over my hardware to kind of add a little bit of a bling bling on it. Okay, everybody. So this piece is done. As you can see, we've got some greens, we've got some blues. We did our little invisible stencil here on the sides. I did pure ocean on the sides and then I just did the shading like I did and I showed you how to do the cobalt. I just did some cobalt up here and down here. Nothing too crazy. I wanted to focus really on the front of this piece. I didn't want to make it too much. So again, if you guys are not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell. Again, everything I use will be in the description below. Just hit that little see more thing and I'll have everything down here. There are a couple things that are not released as of yet but I will have the release dates in parentheses and then as soon as it's released, I'll put the link down there as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this. I'm going to take my camera off the tripod and get really close because I feel like I really need you to see how pretty this piece really is and how cool it is and the layers and dimensions. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next week, I will see you guys later. Ciao. Above the center of attention, but I'm not. I wish I didn't have to give in to the pressure. Uh oh. Mm. I'm
posting pictures trying to be someone I'm not. It feels just like I'm lying to you. I fake it, stage it, trying to live some perfect life. I know I'm wasting time. Cause I just want to call my friends and see what they're doing tonight. It doesn't have to be so special. I try to be myself. You do the same and we'll be alright. Impressions. Oh. 